Sometimes reality is better than fiction. And this story is both the funniest thing I've seen happen on Wall Street in years and one of the best examples I've ever seen of regular traders getting the best of Wall Street billionaires. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard about GameStop recently, ticker symbol GME. Here's the chart. As you can see, this stock has gone absolutely insane of about 1,500%, you know, for years. This was a stock that traded down anywhere between $4 and maybe $10, $15. And it recently got a little bit of boost from both people gaming more during the pandemic and the launch of the PS5, et cetera, et cetera. Well, famed uh, famed short seller, the firm Citron Research, came out with a report calling for this stock to be shorted, saying they took a short position themselves. Now, these are pretty influential guys. Normally, when they do this, a stock tanks, but that's not happened with GME. In fact, the stock went the other way. The reason? A bunch of kids with Robinhood accounts and a Reddit subforum known as Wall Street Bets. Here's the website, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Wall Street Bets. Now, this started really as mostly a joke. It's kids on that. We're talking 16, 18, 22 years old, showing about just what they call YOLO trades. They put their whole account into one stock or one call option and either having huge returns or just devastating losses. But the forum has grown, and now it's actually quite a force. In fact, as you see right here, there are 2.4 million, what they're calling degenerates, meaning followers of this forum. And when Citron decided they were going to short GME, these guys said, all right, that's a big short position. Let's screw the guy. Let's buy the stock and push it up because there's less supply. And that's what they did. And they shot this stock up. Let me go in here. Um, from $20 when they all combined forces and, and sort of pumped this stock from 20 bucks to 40 bucks in just about a day and a half. Well, that's when things really started getting interesting. You see, the owner of Citron Research then posted this to, to um, Twitter saying tomorrow he's going to do a live stream, explain his case, explain why it was he that didn't like it at 40. He's definitely going back to 20. And here's the line that got him. He said, buyers at these levels are the suckers at this poker game, in which someone made a pretty funny comment about them. However, as you can imagine, our degenerates over at Wall Street bets didn't take kindly to this, and then they all decided to go all in. They all piled their money, bought this stock up, and if he thought it was bad at 40, they shot it to $160. That's right, a stock that was 17 bucks was now at 160 bucks. It's up more than 1,500% over the last six months. Now, this is what's known as a short squeeze. This is what happened with Tesla last year, if you watched that video. <clears throat> but the idea is fairly simple. If you short a stock, you're betting on it to go down. So instead of buying a stock low and trying to sell it high, you borrow it from a broker when you don't own it, you sell it, and your goal is to buy it back at a lower price, capture that profit, and then return the share to the broker you borrowed it from. Well, there's a borrowing rate with shorting stock. If you don't own it, you got to borrow up somebody who does. And normally that's 3 4 maybe 5%. But when stocks become heavily shorted, and these short interest, meaning the percentage of the shares gets up to 20 30 40%, that rate goes up. At its peak, the short interest on GME was 150%. That's right. People had held more shares short of this stock than even existed. So the borrow rate went through the roof. Um, you see this report here from a guy online reporting that interactive brokers, Schwab, and a lot of others were not only raising their requirements, completely eliminating margin on GME, meaning they were not letting people go short this thing. Um, and then this, this commenter said, Fidelity, a regular investor, Fidelity offered him 10.5% just to loan out his share, let them borrow his shares to short them. So you know you've got a crazy short squeeze going on. Um, and when this thing continued to rocket higher, remember our guy at Citron was going to do a live stream and make his case? Well, that got postponed because the boys at Wall Street Bets then hacked his Twitter account, then sent him, sent him threatening messages to the point he made a big public announcement, which was this letter. What they've experienced in the past 48 hours is nothing sort of shameful and a sad commentary on the state of the investment community. We will no longer be commenting on GameStop because, quote, the angry mob who owns this stock has spent the past 48 hours committing multiple crimes. I'll turn over to the FBI, including harassment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He even put a video on there where the guy's just basically whining about this. And, and, and to summarize it, 
this Wall Street fat cat cannot fathom that a bunch of kids with Robin Hood accounts who, who know nothing, according to him, have bested him, and this guy has lost billions of dollars because of it. So classic short squeeze, and maybe I've got a sick sense of humor, but to me it's a funny story, and it's always even if someone's losing money, it is refreshing to see regular, everyday retail investors get the best of Wall Street, and we're seeing this happen more and more and more. Folks, this is not the same market it was 12 months ago. This is not your daddy's stock market. What worked before does not work today. If you're trying to buy stocks with low P.E. ratios and low price to book and traditional value fundamentals that we've all watched time and time again, you're going to underperform in the market, if not lose money.